started using opiates intravenously for the first time when I was 15 years old. Down here, I would do any, almost anything for needles, you know what I mean? Like, um, I would find used needles. They're laying everywhere, like, pick them up, go get, steal some bleach, rinse them out, and use them. And you've got a, a habit as bad as mine, there was no, you know what I'm saying, you didn't have no choice, really. You had to do it the best way you had to. Miami has been number one in new HIV infections in the country due to the drug paraphernalia statutes in the state of Florida and Miami-Dade law that prohibits the distribution of syringes without a prescription, there was no place for people who inject drugs to get clean syringes. The simple epiphany that Florida needed syringe exchange came when I was a third year medical student. We had this tool that we were withholding from this vulnerable population. One of my colleagues said, well, what are you gonna do about this? And I said, well, I guess we need syringe exchange. And he said, how are you gonna do it? And I said, I don't know. <laughs> Ansel Tooks. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair and the entire Appropriations uh, Committee. For it was the first time that the students in Florida had written a resolution to the House of Delegates. When I first heard this idea and, and met with Hansel, my initial uh, reaction was, we have a very conservative legislature. It's just not something that I think will fly. The evidence that needle exchanges prevent HIV and hepatitis is as strong as the evidence that smoking cessation prevents cancer. You know, initially, I thought that he'll become discouraged, but that didn't happen. We would pile into cars with sleeping bags and pillows, and we would drive the seven and a half hour trek through rural Florida and uh, go to Tallahassee, and we all piled up in one hotel room and went and worked the Capitol. I think it takes a lot of courage when you're walking into an arena that, that you're unfamiliar with. He would walk down the halls of the legislature, and if he saw an elected official, he would go right up to him and introduce himself and start talking about the issue. He didn't care who they were. It cost $380,000 to treat somebody for a lifetime of HIV and $80,000 for a cycle of the new hepatitis C drugs. As these patients rarely have private insurance, the costs fall directly on Florida taxpayers through Medicaid, the Ryan He White actually Center. spent the first few years trying to get people to realize that this is not a program that encourages drug use. And this took several years to get, get through the process. He wasn't gonna let anything stop him. So please help us save lives and taxpayer dollars at zero cost to the state and now zero cost to the municipalities. And uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Dr. Tooks. And, and for the freshman members, Dr. Tooks has been pursuing this since he was a medical student. And I think I had hair when he started working on this issue. He managed to bring people from both parties together, people that saw this as a real crisis, period. People, not Democrat, not Republican, just people. So today in the Florida House, we have uh, Dr. Hansel Tooks and uh, FSU medical student John Dudley. Stand up, please, guys. These guys came up here to support the needle exchange bill. Dr. Tooks has been working on this bill for about four years, and you've probably seen him come around and knock on your office. And this is exactly what citizen activism is all about. 95 yeays, 20 nays, Mr. Speaker. So the bill passes. On this issue, it was very clear. Lives are gonna be saved, people are gonna be impacted. And that was incredibly satisfying. We opened the first needle exchange in the state of Florida on World AIDS Day, December 1st, 2016. So, uh, how's it going? Good, how are you guys? How are you good? We serve 250 people regularly and we do an intake where we offer anonymous HIV and hepatitis C testing. You know what I mean, basically playing Russian roulette with a, with a used needle, you know what I mean? You don't have to do that, you know? You don't have to go and try to borrow one off somebody that very likely could have HIV. So in the spring, we launched the Naloxone program where we were distributing uh, nasal Narcan. Here. So this is Narcan. We've okay. saved 16 lives with this so far. You just push it up? Yeah. Oh, okay. Ooh, and that's, there you it. Go. that's it. It's done. And you saved a life. Nice. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> right. A couple days ago, I was in Overtown, and you know, I seen a guy that I knew who was overdosing. I had my Narcan, and and I sprayed him. Within 
a minute or so, he started breathing normal. We don't want to die. None of us do, you know? So many people are dying. We had a responsibility to do something about that. Everybody's life is valuable. Everyone's.